Hey homies, what's up? It's the Tominator. So in light of that last video on the brilliantly lit British Grand Prix, I figured we could take a little trip down memory lane and discuss some more shows with great lighting. And actually a commenter suggested that I do a top 10 favorite shows of all time. So thank you Linus Johansson. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, that was a good idea and this one really resonates with me. Because I was actually struggling to decide on a topic for the next video. Now, I would love to go back and cover the 1996 German Grand Prix guys, I really would, but all of the available footage seems to be limited to the individual routines and the pose down, not the all-important mandatory comparisons where these contests are actually decided, right? So then I was thinking maybe the 2005 Olympia, but again, the footage sucks. There's some prejudging video of Jay and Ronnie, but it's taken from a weird low angle. And for the only one that's in HD, the ass hat plastered a giant watermark across the screen, rendering it completely tacky and unusable. So instead, we're going to sort of change gears and cover something a little more fun and self-indulgent. Like I said, this is going to be my top 10 favorite bodybuilding shows of all time. So obviously, this is going to be biased because it's my personal top 10, and I'm a sucker for the 90s and the more modern day shows. Don't get me wrong, I like the golden era too, but I wasn't around back in the 70s and 80s, and for the most part, the photos and footage that have survived since then are pretty scarce in both quantity and quality, so it's hard to really appreciate those shows as much as we probably should. Anyway, we're going to go in chronological order here, so kicking things off is the 1993 Mr. Olympia. This show was awesome on so many levels. First, you had rookie sensation Flex Wheeler in arguably his best shape ever. Now, most would claim that he was sharper at the Arnold Classic earlier in the year, and in retrospect, I'd agree. But when I first saw clips from this show, I hadn't seen him at the 93 Arnold Classic, so to me, this was about as good as it gets. I just couldn't imagine a much better or more aesthetic-looking physique. Second, you had the emergence of Dorian Yates as a truly dominant force. Granted, he was already the reigning champ and had won the year before, but 93 marked a significant improvement since he didn't over-diet and came in as big as a house, just bulldozing the competition. Individually, I prefer the shape and symmetry of Flex all day, but when you stand them next to each other, it becomes pretty clear who comes out on top. Beyond those two, you had very strong versions of Sean Ray and Kevin Lavroni also, not to mention Paul Dolette, Lee Labrada, and even Lou Ferrigno in part two of his famous comeback. To top it off, this Olympia had some of the best lighting ever, or at least some of the video and photos look like they were taken with baked in Instagram filters. These guys look so grainy and razor sharp. All right, the next show on my list is the aforementioned German Grand Prix in 1996. This show was all about the lighting man. With the exception of one other contest, this was probably the most memorable stage lighting in bodybuilding history. All of the competitors looked spectacular, and the lineup was deep as hell. You had Yates, El Somebody, Lavroni, Dillette, Coleman, Taylor, Cormier. This minor show packed more talent into it than most of the recent Olympias. And it's so rare to see a reigning Mr. Olympia compete outside of that event. But I'm glad he did, because here we got to see what is quite possibly Dorian Yates' best shape ever. Personally, I don't think so, and he doesn't mention it as an option in interviews either. The question is really between 93 and 95. But I think the fact that so many people rank this at the top is a testament to that incredible stage lighting. I love the way the background was basically solid, but would change colors as they posed. It really lent it a dynamic element, without becoming too distracting or filled with tacky advertisements. Incidentally, if anybody can link to some good mandatory comparison footage, please share it in the comments. I'd love to do a proper review of this contest. Next up is a show I recently reviewed, and it reminded me of just how special it was. The 1997 Finland Grand Prix. Starring hometown hero Marco Savalainen, Ronnie Coleman, Chris Cormier, Nasser El Sambadi, and arguably the all-time greatest version of Kevin Lavroni, this one was an underrated classic. Again, the backdrop was simple and the lighting was on point. 
All of the contestants were in shape, with not a distended midsection in sight. Those bicep peaks on Marco were insane beyond belief. Ronnie's developing back was already showing flashes of its future glory, and Kevin put on such a breathtaking routine, it was like pure poetry in motion. One of my all-time favorite posing performances. The 1999 Olympia has got to be mentioned. I think this one is essential for any true fan of bodybuilding, since it had probably the deepest and most talented lineup of any Mr. Olympia, period. With Ronnie Coleman leading the way in what I consider to be perhaps his ultimate, most flawless form, this was a star-studded spectacle like no other. Chris Cormier was at or near his best, and when even an immaculate Sean Ray barely cracks the top five, you know that it's a tough crowd. Not to mention three auspicious debuts from future Hall of Famers like Dexter Jackson, Jay Cutler, and Marcus Rule. This was an all-star lineup like no other. 98 was close too, but I feel like 99 just slightly surpasses it. The lighting and stage setup was improved here as well. And we're not done with 1999 because there was also the 99 British Grand Prix, which I just covered in the last video. So I'm not going to reiterate too much on this one, other than to drill home the point that this was perhaps the best lighting ever. Certainly it was some of the most dramatic and unique, with bright spotlights casting deep shadows and highlighting all of the contours and crevices on these guys' physiques. With a mostly plain, dark background, their outlines were put on full display. And that top three call-out, man, that was something else. One of the most epic ever, with Ronnie, Flex, and Kevin each looking like they stepped out of the pages of a Marvel comic book. I know I'm not alone in saying that. I just love this show. This next entry was almost an afterthought. I nearly forgot to include it, but then realized that I had to throw in at least one of the Iron Man pros. The lighting and backdrops at these competitions was always stellar. It's such a shame that they discontinued the event. And while this isn't meant to be a best lighting list, what you'll find is that basically any contest on here had well above average lighting and stage layout. Because let's face it, bodybuilding is a visual event through and through. So lighting and optical clarity is of paramount importance. It not only lets us judge these events more accurately, but it also enhances the appearance of the physiques. Not to take anything away from Melvin Anthony or Chris Cormier, but both of them were the beneficiaries of some excellent production values here. I especially love Melvin Anthony at this show. This is my favorite posing routine of his. I made a video a couple years ago basically saying that he was like the spiritual successor to Flex Wheeler. Just an incredibly aesthetic physique with those tiny joints and bulging muscle bellies. Next, we jump ahead to the 2009 Olympia, where Jay made history by becoming the only Mr. Olympia to be defeated, then later reclaim the Sandow Trophy. Some people get confused because both Arnold and Franco made comebacks to win years later, but the distinction here is that neither of them were actually defeated. They both went out on top and later returned to collect one more title, whereas Jay was upset the year before when he lost to Dexter Jackson in 08. That's the difference. Anyway, I was contemplating adding 2008 as well because I was so excited when Dexter won, but objectively speaking, I feel like 2009 had a superior lineup with much better lighting, so it was definitely a more interesting Olympia overall. Kai Green was making his highly anticipated Olympia debut after winning his first of an eventual three Arnold Classic titles, and Phil Heath was trying to improve on his impressive third place finish from the year prior. Unfortunately, both of them somewhat disappointed, uh, going fourth and fifth respectively, but Branch Warren came out of nowhere to finish second, somehow upsetting Dexter in the process. That's a decision that continues to baffle me to this day, but nonetheless, this was an amazing contest, full of hype and intrigue and unpredictability. It's a true modern-day classic in my eyes. Not long afterwards, we'd have the 2010 Arnold Classic. Going off memory, this may just be the best top four that the Arnold ever featured. You had outstanding versions of both Kai Green and Phil Heath, with Branch Warren and Dexter Jackson not far off either. Once again, the lighting was top tier, and this allowed us to appreciate the ultra-crisp conditioning and separation on guys like Phil and Dexter in particular. 
I felt that Kai, with his darker complexion, maybe got the short end of the stick, as it seemed to flatter slightly lighter skin tones like Phil's. But even so, they all looked full and fresh. No shortage of quality muscle at this show. In fact, it was at this time that I predicted Phil could become truly dominant if he just added, say, another 10 to 20 pounds of muscle mass. Well, as it turns out, it only took another 5 to 10 pounds for him to secure his first Olympia championship. And, well, we all know how the story turned out after that. This brings us straight to my next favorite moment, which was the 2011 Olympia. What an awesome contest. I was so happy to see Phil overtake Jay. I don't know what it is, but I I always seemed happy to watch Jay lose. And I'm not a Cutler hater by any means. He's not my favorite physique, but he is probably among my top 10. It's just that when he lost in 08, and then again in 2011, it marked a return to round muscle bellies and tighter waistlines and more 90s style separation, since both Dexter and Phil brought those qualities in abundance. I guess I'm just a sucker for more aesthetic physiques. Because, yes, Phil was freaking aesthetic at this show. Some of you young cats who just got into bodybuilding in the past four or five years might mainly recognize Phil for his bubble gut. But in his early days, the guy was a genetic phenom, heralded for his 3D effect as well as his trim waistline. Looking back, this was probably Phil's ultimate form, in the same way that 99 could be said to be Ronnie's ultimate form. They were both at their most flawless in these respective years, I think. Coleman in 03 or Phil in 2013 might have been more dominant versions, but they weren't necessarily better when you look at it holistically. I think Phil was definitely more conditioned here than in 2013, for instance, even though he wasn't quite as full or his back as well developed. Anyway, this brings us to my last entry, which was the very next year in 2012. What makes this one special was that iconic two-man showdown between Phil and Kai. This was the first time they'd go head-to-head for the Olympia title, and for my money, this was their closest and greatest battle, even better than 2014. I remember actually thinking at the time that maybe Kai should have won it. But upon closer examination, when I went back and reviewed it, I believe Phil rightfully came out on top. He simply had fewer weaknesses, and so even if you wanted to argue that Kai took more poses, it's impossible to deny that Phil had the more complete package. Alright guys, so that's my 10 favorite contests in a nutshell. There were a couple others that stood out as well, like Dorian and Haney duking it out in 91. The 1995, 98, and 2008 Olympias are also worth mentioning, as is the 96 Arnold Classic. More recently, even the 2018 or 2020 Olympias were pretty cool to witness, with excellent new champs being crowned. It should be noted that I whipped this whole thing together in a matter of hours, so there's a chance something might have slipped my mind. But for now, if we're capping it to just 10, then these contests represent some of my most cherished bodybuilding memories. So I guess my question for you is, what are some of your favorite contests and why? Please let us know in the comments below. Uh, But until then, this has been the Tominator signing off, and I'll be back.